Hi, I'm James Headley. Welcome back to the Living in Savannah channel. Uh, it's been a while, but the average 30-year mortgage rate just dropped below 7% this past week. Uh, couple that with the Fed's signaling that rate hikes are likely done and multiple rate cuts are also likely on the horizon for 2024. And it looks like we may have a further shift in the real estate environment in the new year. While this isn't all good news for prospective buyers, as I've noted in other episodes uh, here on the channel, there are definitely going to be positive developments for a number of my viewers out there. Uh, for those that are possibly in that camp of seriously considering a home purchase in 2024, I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about uh, one of the basics of real estate negotiations, and that's the offer. Uh, before diving in on this central topic, let me take a moment to thank everyone out there who has subscribed and shared the channel and encourage those who are watching uh, who haven't done so to please consider taking a few moments to do so. Uh, and of course, thank you for liking those videos that you find useful and for continuing to tune in each week. Uh, with all of that said, let's talk about the offer to purchase a home. Specifically, I want to uh, outline four considerations that every buyer should keep in mind when considering an offer on a home. Number one, do not fall into the trap of thinking about the offer as simply the dollar amount that you're offering for the home. Yes, uh, this is almost always going to be the primary aspect of an offer, but you don't want to overlook the other elements of your offer that could make the difference between an acceptance and uh, an offer that is rejected or countered on terms that are, that are not going to be uh, amenable to you. Uh, here, I'm referring in general to things like contingencies and timelines. Uh, is your offer contingent on the sale of another home or upon securing favorable financing terms? How flexible is your timeline to close? Um, these are just some of the accompanying aspects to that dollar figure that you want to keep in mind, as in some situations, they can significantly impact how favorably or not uh, a seller views your offer. Brings us to number two, and that's that every negotiation begins with an offer. Now, it sounds like common sense, right? Well, it may be, but I can recall multiple instances where in representing both prospective buyers as well as sellers, that one party or the other overlooked this basic tenant, uh, potentially to their detriment. You know, think of the seller who insists that the value of their home is higher than what the comps and other analyses would indicate. Uh, how many prospective buyers look at that asking price, figure it's way too high, and simply move on to the next home? I'm not advocating for a strategy here of writing a bunch of lowball offers that have no basis in reality, but if there is a good financial case to be made for writing at a specific number, I'd say definitely write the offer. Number three, as a, as a corollary to that second point, keep in mind that it is harder to say no to something on paper. You know, in other words, it's one thing for a seller to have strong feelings about the value of their home in the abstract, but it may be quite a different thing for them to reject an offer on paper that is below that number, uh, even by five to 10%. You know, think about it through a different lens. How many of us go into the holiday season each year saying that we're not going to overindulge, but then when the holiday cookies are put in front of us, we find ourselves nibbling on that frosted reindeer sugar cookie. Uh, the point is that it is easier to say no to something that isn't actually in front of you. So if in doubt as a buyer, write, a, write that reasonable offer. And that brings us to the final point, and that is our final consideration, uh, and that's finally, have a good strategy for the terms of your offer before writing it. You know, again, this seems awfully basic, right? Well, just to put it in practical terms, have you thought about the two ends of the spectrum in terms of the dollar amount you might include in an offer? At the low end, think of that as the absolute lowest dollar amount that you can reasonably make a case for a seller accepting. Making an offer there is likely done with the intent to solicit a counter offer. So both sides have a more realistic sense of what may be possible after that counter offer. You know, if the market in 2024 continues to move in the direction of a more balanced market from the current seller's market orientation, this can be a very good strategy. You know, conversely, at the other end of the spectrum, you could offer the absolute max that you're willing to pay for the home and make it clear that this is a take it or leave it offer with no room for negotiation. You know, while in this instance you may risk paying more than you might otherwise uh, have for a home by employing the strategy, you also reduce the risk, of course, um, of losing out to another bidder or insulting a perhaps thin-skinned seller. 
Uh, of course, there is a full spectrum between these endpoints. So it's in your best interest to ensure you feel comfortable with the dynamics of the market and your agent's ability and motivation to work for the best terms alongside you. I hope this discussion was helpful. And as always, it would be my pleasure to connect with you one-on-one -on -one to understand your particular circumstances and discuss uh, what's the best course for you to achieve your desired outcome in the real estate market. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime. And uh, in the meantime, please keep sharing, subscribing, and liking. Uh, happy holidays and see you in the next episode.